Today we're going to be learning about summarizing data. We're going to start off by looking at the measures of central tendency. The first one that we're going to look at is the mean, also known as the average. Okay. To work out the mean or the average of a data set, we take all the values in that data set and we add them together. And that will give us the sum of the values in the data set. And then we take that sum and we divide it by the total number of values in the set. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. So in this example, I've got over here the values 9, 16, 16, 14, 4, 13. These could be test marks or anything like that. These are the values in our data set, and we need to find the mean or the average of these values. So to do that, I first need to know how many values there are. So I'm just going to count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are six values. That is the number of values in this data set. Once I know that, I can take those values and I can add them all up. That's going to give me the sum of the data values. Okay. Then in order to work out the mean, I need to take that sum and I need to divide it by six. Now, when you're writing this in your book or in a test or something, you don't want to have to write this whole calculation out. You don't need to. You can just work it out on your calculator and then you can write down what you get on the calculator. So Instead of writing 9 plus 16 plus 16 plus 14 plus 4 plus 13, you can just write 72 after you've worked that out in your calculator and divide that by 6. Okay, and then you end up with your mean when you work that out is equal to 12. So the date for this particular data set, the mean is 12. Okay, so that's how we work out the mean or the average. We take all the values in the data set, we add them up, and we divide by the number of values. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the median. The median is the middle value when all values have been arranged in ascending order. So first of all, in order to find the median, you have to put your values all in ascending order. That's from smallest to biggest. And then you have to find the middle value. Now, when your data has an odd number of values, it's easy to find the median because there isn't a middle value. But when you've got an even number of values, then there isn't going to be a middle value. So you have to find the number that's halfway between the two values that are in the middle. So we're going to look at how to do that still. You can also find the position of the median by taking the number of values, adding one to it, working that out, and then dividing the result by two. Now this is useful when you're working with a large set of data. It's not really necessary when you're working with a small set of data, but when you're working with a large set of data, it is useful. So it's a good idea to know how to do it. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example. In this example, I have got one, two, three, four, five values. Okay, so the number of values is five, and that is an odd number. Now that's important. Because there's an odd number, it means that there is going to be a middle value. Okay, but before I can find the median, the first thing I have to do is I have to arrange these numbers in ascending order. So I'm going to take these values and put them in ascending order, and it's going to look like this. 4, 9, 14, 16, 16. Now that they're in ascending order, I can find the middle value. So I can find the middle value in this set easily because there are only five. The middle one is going to be this one over here. But when you've got a large number of values, like I said, it helps to know how to find the position. So I'm going to show you how to do that now quickly as well. So the position of the median we find by taking the number of values, which is five, and adding one to it. So that gives us six. And then we divide that by two, giving us three. So the third value is where we're going to find our median. So one, two, three. Once you've got them in, in ascending order, you just find the third value, and that's where you're going to find your median. So our median for this one is 14. Okay, next example, we have now got an even number. In this case, I've got 9, 16, 16, 14, 4, 13. So the number of values is 6, which is an even number. Just like in the previous example, I have to put these in ascending order. So if I arrange them, it's going to look like this. 4, 9, 13, 14, 16, 16. Now to find the position of the median, just like I did in the previous one, I'm going to take the number of values, add 1, and divide by 2. But now when I take the 6 and I add 1, I get 7. And when I divide that by 2, that gives me 3.5. Now, I obviously don't have a position 3.5 in, in this data set. I've got position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4, position 5, position 6. I don't have a half position in this data set. 
So three and a half means that it is halfway between the third and the fourth values. So I've got, here's my third one, here's my fourth one. It's halfway between the 13 and the 14 in this data set. So to work out what that is going to be, I take those two values. So to work out my median, I'm going to take those two values and I'm going to add them up and divide by two. And once I've done that, that will give me the halfway mark or the number that is halfway between them as my median. So my median for this data set is 13.5. Okay, so that's how you find the median. You put your values in ascending order from smallest to biggest, and you then you find the middle value in that data set. If there's an odd number, you just take the middle one. If there's an even number, you take the middle two, you add them, and you divide it by two, and that will give you the median. Okay, next we've got the mode. Now, the mode is the value or values that has the highest frequency that occurs the most often. Okay, so think mode and most. The mode occurs the most often. Okay, so if we look at an example over here, I've got 9, 16, 16, 14, 4, 13. You don't really have to arrange them in ascending order, but it does help to arrange them because then it helps you to be able to see more easily if there are any values that have been repeated. So if I arrange this in ascending order, it's going to look like this. 4, 9, 13, 14, 16, 16. Here you can see easily that there are two 16s next to each other over there. So 16 has the highest frequency. So that is going to be our mode. So 16, there are two of them. So our mode is 16 for this example. Now let's have a look at another example over here. Now this is almost the same as the previous example. The values are the same except for this 13 is now a 14. Okay, so doing the same thing, if I arrange it in ascending order, it's going to look like this. 4, 9, 14, 14, 16, 16. But now I've got two 14s and I've got two 16s. So when I find my mode, I've got the two 16s like I had in the previous example, but I also have these two 14s. So in this example, I have got two modes. The first mode is 14 and the second mode is 16. So when you've got data, you can have more than one mode depending on how many values there are that have that same highest frequency. You can also have no modes. If you have the same number of every single piece of data, if they all have the same frequency, then you're not going to have a mode. So the mode is something that you might have, you might not have, you might have more than one and so on. Right, so that's the measures of central tendency. We've got the mean, which is the average, we've got the median, which is the middle, and we've got the mode, which is the most frequent, the one that has the, that appears the most. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the measures of dispersion. Okay, the first measure of dispersion is the range. The range is the difference between the maximum and the minimum values in the data set. So to work out the range, we need to know the maximum, which is the highest value in the data set. We need to know the minimum, which is the lowest value in the data set. And we need to subtract them because difference means subtraction. Okay, so an example over here, 9, 16, 16, 14, 4, 13. I need to know the maximum, which is the highest, and I need to know the minimum, which is the lowest, in order to work out the range. So the maximum is 16, and the minimum in the set is four. Okay, so once I've got those, I'm going to work out my range by finding the difference. Now remember, difference means subtraction. So it's going to be the range is the maximum minus the minimum. And that gives us in this example, 12. Okay, and then we've got extreme values as well, also known as outliers. An extreme value or an outlier is a value that is out of the ordinary or not typical of the rest of the data set. It is much higher or much lower than the rest of the data values. Okay, so an example over here, we've got 9, 16, 16, 53, 4, and 13. In this example over here, first of all, if I arrange it just so I can see more easily outliers, um, outliers will always be right at the bottom or right at the top of the data set. So it's easier to see them if you've arranged them. So I'm going to arrange them quickly. And that gives me 4, 9, 13, 16, 16, 53. Okay, so now if you look at these values, we've got the 4, 9, 13, 16, 16. These are kind of all in the same sort of range. But then this 53 is way, way, way out, much, much higher than any of the other values. So in this example, 53 is going to be our outlier. 
Okay, now you won't always have an outlier. Sometimes there is an outlier, sometimes there isn't an outlier, and sometimes there's more than one outlier. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example. So in this example, it says a group of learners wrote a test out of 20. Their results are listed below. They got 17, 11, 2, 14, 15, 15, 9, 10, and 19. And for this data set, we need to find the mean, median, mode, range, and outliers if there are any. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this example. So I've got my values written over here. The very first thing I'm going to do before anything else is I am going to rearrange these into ascending order because they have to be in ascending order in order to be able to find the median. So, and it's going to be helpful for some of the others as well. So I'm going to go and arrange them in ascending order by looking through them and finding the smallest first, that's two over here and crossing it out and writing it there. The next one is going to be nine, cross that out. Then I've got 10 over here. Then I've got 11. Then I've got 14, then 15, another 15, then 17, and finally 19. So now they're in ascending order, okay? I also need, before I can work out my mean, median, mode, any of that, I also need to know how many values there are altogether. So I'm going to go and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values altogether. So that over there is how many I'm going to be working with. I'm just writing that down so that I don't forget it. Okay, so now the first question, question A, is to work out the mean. So remember, to work out the mean, we're going to take all of these values and add them up, and then we're going to divide by the number of values that there are. So I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to say 2 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 14 plus 15 plus another 15 plus 17 plus 19. And that gives me 112. So I've got 112 divided by the number of items, which is six or nine, sorry, the number of values, which is nine. Okay. And then I work that out. So 112 divided by nine gives me 12.44. So the mean for this data set is 12.44. The next thing I'm going to do is work out my median. Okay. Now, when you are working with a small set of data, you can work out your median just by going from the outside and working your way in. So we go the two on the very ends. Remember, it has to already be in ascending order when you're doing this. So the two on the very ends and you just work your way in. Jump one in on both sides, one in on both sides, one in on both sides until I get to the middle, which is the 14 over here. So my median is 14. But there is also the option of working out the position of the median by saying the number of items, which is 9, plus 1, and dividing that by 2. Okay, so 9 plus 1 is 10, divided by 2 gives me 5. So the fifth value is where I would find my median. So if you go and find the fifth one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 14. It's the same thing that we got over there. So this is a, an option that you have when you're working with a much bigger data set where it's not as easy to do it this method, okay? It helps to be able to have a, a method that will always work, okay? Then question C, the mode. To work out the mode, I need to go and see if there are any values that have a higher frequency than the rest of the values. So if I look through here, there's only one two, only one nine, only one 10, only one 11, only one 14. I've got two 15s, only one 17 and only one 19. So the only one that had more than one was the 15s over here. So 15 is going to be my mode in this example. Then question D, for the range, I'm going to take the highest value which is over here, the 19, minus the lowest value, which is the 2. It's the maximum minus the minimum, and that gives me 17. So the range for this example is 17. And then finally, the outliers. Let's see if there are any outliers in this, in this example. So I've got 2, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 15, 17, 19. Now from 9 to 19, that's a range of 10. 
the 2 is almost the same distance away from the 9 as the range of all the rest of the data. So the 2 is really quite far away from the rest of the data. So the 2 is an outlier in this example. Okay, so that's how we do the first question. The next example we're going to do is this one over here. Okay, so in this example, we've also got marks that learners got when they wrote a test out of 60, and these are the marks that they got. So we've got 45, 50, 39, 35, 39, 54, 35, 57, 37, and 39. We need to go and find, for this data set, the mean, the median, the mode, the range, and any outliers, if there are any. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. So first of all, over here, I've got my data values. I'm going to go and I'm going to arrange these into ascending order, just like I did with the last example. So I've got 45, 50, 39, 35, 39, 54, 35, 7, 37, and 39. The lowest value that I can see over here is 35. So I need to put that first. Then I've got another 35 over there. Then I have got 37. Then I've got 39. And another 39. And another 39 over here. Then I have got 45. Then 50. 54. And finally 57. Okay, so that's all my data now arranged in ascending order. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of values that I've got because I need to know how many there are to be able to work out the mean, median, mode, and so on. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 values altogether. Okay, and that's going to be helpful for me when I am working things out. Now, the first thing is the mean. So the mean in this example... I'm going to add all of these up, just like I did in the last example. So I'm going to have 35 plus another 35 plus 37 plus 39 plus another 39 plus a third 39 plus 45 plus 50 plus 54 plus 57. And that gives me 430 altogether. I divide that by the number of values that there are, which is 10. And that will give you 43. So your mean for this data set is 43. The next question is to work out the median. Okay, so the median, remember, is the middle. It's already in ascending order, so I can go over here and I can say, these are the ones on the outside, I'm going to work my way in. So 35 and 57, then I have 35 and 54, then 37 and 50, then 39 and 45, and then I've got 39 and 39 over here. Now, these are my middle two values. I don't have another one in between, so I need to work out what is in between those. Okay, now in this particular example, they happen to actually be the same as each other. And when they are the same, your median is just going to be the same as both of them, but you will still get that if you work it out. Okay, so I'm going to still go through the process to remind you about how to do it. So I'm going to take the middle two values which are these over here, and I need to add them, because remember, in order to work out the median, we take the middle two values, if there's an even number, we take the middle two values and we add them and divide by two. So it's 39 plus 39 divided by two. Okay, now when you add 39 and 39 and divide that by two, you're still going to get 39, okay, because they're the same as each other. Right, so our median is 39. Now remember, you can also work out the position where the median would be, and let me just show you how that works quickly. If this was a much bigger data set, then it would be helpful to be able to do this. So the position for the median, I could work out by saying the number of values, which is 10 plus 1, and then dividing that by 2. So 10 plus 1 is 11, divided by 2 is 5.5. Five and a half or 5.5 is halfway between five and six. So it's halfway between the fifth and the sixth.
Okay, so I'm looking for the fifth, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's the fifth and the sixth. So that is where I'm going to be looking for my median. So those are the two values I would then add up and divide by two, which is exactly what I did anyway. Okay, the other, or the next thing we need to do is for question C, the mode. Okay, so now remember the mode is the value that has the highest frequency or the values that have the highest frequency. So now if I look at this data, I can see I've got 35 and 35. There are two 35s. Then I've got 37, there's only one. I've got three 39s, 145, 150, 154, and 157. So because there are three 39s, that's more than the two 35s. Okay, so 39 is going to be my mode. Remember, the mode is the value that has the highest frequency. So there are three 39s that's a higher frequency than two for the 35s. Okay, and then I've got D, my range, which we work out by taking the maximum, which is 57, minus the minimum, which is 35. Okay, so 57, minus 35 is 22. So the range for this data is 22. And then question E outlines. If I look over here, I've got 35, 35, 37, that's all pretty close. Then up to here, I've got 50, 54, 57, it's also pretty close. In this example, there are no outliers. Okay, so remember, there aren't always going to be outliers. All right. Now you're going to do some for yourself. The first example you're going to do is this one over here. You've been given the data 25, 29, 30, 21, 23, 25, 20, and 23. You need to work out the mean, the median, the mode, the range, and any outliers for this data. Okay. If there are any places where you need to round off, you round off to two decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this example. Okay, so let's go through that example and see what you should have got. So the first thing you had to do was arrange it in ascending order. So when you arrange in ascending order, you should have got this. You should have got 20, 21, 23, 23, 25, 25, 29, 30. The next thing you had to do was you had to work out the number of, va of values or count the number of values. If you counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there were 8 values altogether. Then you had to work out the mean. To do that, you had to add up all of these values and divide by eight. So that should have given you 196 divided by eight, which would then be equal to 
24.5. So you should have had a mean of 24.5. The median is the middle. To work out where the middle is, the position, you can take 8, which is the number of values, and add 1. That gives you 9. And divide that by 2. That will give you 4.5. Okay, so that means we're looking between the 4th and the 5th values. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the 4th and the 5th values are 23 and 25. So we're going to take those two values and add them and divide by 2. Once we've done that, we'll end up with our median, which is 24. It is halfway between the 23 and the 25. Okay, then our mode in this example, we had 23 as a mode because there are two 23s. We also have 25 as a mode because there are two 25s. So this one had two modes. And then our range, we take the highest value minus the lowest value. So it's 30 minus 20. And that gives us our range of 10. And then outliers, in this example, there were no outliers. Okay, so that's what we should have got for that question. The next question you're going to do is this one over here, the same process. And I'm going to give you two minutes for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, you had to take those values and arrange them in ascending order, and this is what you should have got. You should have got 40, 40, 43, 43, 43, 45, 49. Okay, the number of values, if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's 7 values altogether. Then the mean, we take all of those and we add them up, and then we divide by 7. So that's going to be 303 when you add it all up, divided by 7 gives you the mean of 43.29. Then the median, in this case because it's 7, there's an odd number, so the middle one is going to be this 43 over here. To work out the position, if you were wanting to do it that way, you would take the 7, add 1, that gives you 8, divided by 2, that gives you 4. So the fourth value is where we're going to find our median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, it's this one over here, 43. Okay, then our mode is the one that is the most frequent, the one that has the highest frequency. So in this case, there are two 40s, but there are three 43s. So the mode is going to be 43 for this example. Then our range is the highest, that's 49, minus the lowest, which is 40, and that gives you 9. So your range for this example is 9. And then outliers, if you look at the values in this over here, they are all pretty much in the same sort of range. So our, there are no outliers for this example. Okay, next example. 
here once again you're going to find all of those same things the mean median mode range and outliers for this new data set and i'm going to give you two minutes for this example as well Okay, so let's go through those. So first you had to rearrange it in ascending order. You should have got 7, 10, 14, 27, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 69. The number of values, if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 values. And then the mean, we're going to take all of those, add them up, and then divide by 9. And you should have got 265 over 9, which if you work that out, would give you 29.44. So your mean for this example is 29.44. Then the median, there are nine values. So again, it's going to be the middle one because it's an odd number. We can just use the middle one, which in this case is this 33 over here. But if you wanted to know how to work that out uh, by working out the position, you would say the position is nine because there are nine items. Plus one gives you 10 divided by two gives you the fifth value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the fifth value is 33. So your median is 33. The mode, in this case, I've got 17, 110, 114, 127, 133, 134, 135, 136, and 169. There aren't any that have a higher frequency. So there are no modes in this example. The range, we take the highest value, which is 69, minus the lowest value, which is 7, and that gives us our range of 62 and then outliers in this example most of the data is sitting from 7 to 36 but if you look over here the 69 is way 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 out of that so the 69 is an outlier in this example right then the last example that you're going to do for today is this one over here i'm going to give you two minutes to work on this example as well
Okay, so let's go through that question quickly. So first, you had to arrange these in ascending order. That should have given you 12, 12, 13, 21, 27, 29, 30, 30, 33, 36. The number of values, if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 values. Then the mean, to work out the mean, we're going to add all of the values up and divide by 10. So when you add it up, you should have got 243. Then you divide by 10, that should give you 24.3. The median is the middle. Now, in this case, because it's an even number, the middle is going to be between these two. Okay, so just quickly to work out where the median would be, if you have a large data set, you would take the number of values. In this case, it's 10. Add one, that gives you 11. Divide by two, and that gives you five and a half. Okay, so five and a half is halfway between the fifth and the sixth. So that's halfway between the fifth and the sixth values, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's 27 and 29. So we're looking for the value that's halfway between those. So I'm going to take those two values, the 27 and 29, I'm going to add them and divide by two. And that will give me the number that's halfway between them, which is 28. The mode, in this case, I've got two 12s and I've got two 30s. So they are both going to be modes. So 12 and 30, will be a mode in this example. And then my range, I take the highest value, which is 36, minus the lowest value, which is 12, and that gives you 24. So the range for this data is 24. And then for the outliers, I've got 12 over here. It's not uncommonly low. If you look at the rest of the data, it's pretty normal. And if you look at the 36 also, it's pretty normal for the data that we're working with. So there are no outliers in this example. And that is how we work with the measures of central tendency and the measures of dispersion to summarize data. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.